All right. Welcome to our 17th lesson in science. I hope you're doing well. We are on the second part of the lesson on the circulatory system in humans. In our previous lesson, we introduced the concept circulatory system, which we identified as also known as cardiovascular system, or vascular system. Uh, it was defined as an organ system that transports blood to all the parts of the body for nourishment. Then we move on to look at the three main parts or composition or components of the circulatory system. And then we identify them as the heart, the blood vessels, and of course the blood. Now, in today's lesson, we are expected by the end of this lesson to one, identify functions of parts of the circulatory system. Functions of parts of the circulatory system. And two, you should be able to learn how to draw a well labeled longitudinal section of the human heart. Draw a well labeled longitudinal section of the human heart. So why don't we start? Now, what are the parts of the circulatory system? All right, we have the heart, the blood vessels, and of course the blood. So what is the function of the heart? As you can see here, what's the function of this blood. All right. The same, the heart is a muscular pear-shaped vascular organ that pumps blood throughout the body. So let's take note of that. The blood vessels. I say the blood vessels serve as passageway through which blood flows, or they are referred to as the tubes through which blood flows. So take note of that. And of course, blood, which is a liquid component of the cellular system, transfers substances to and from the cells of the body. Remember, this is a general function of blood. But we have specific functions of blood which we shall look at in our next lesson. Now let's look at the longitudinal section of the human heart. How the heart looks like when it is cut, cut through from the top to the bottom. All right, you can see for yourself we have two of the same diagrams labeled quite differently. Now we have the first one and the second one. They are similar in structure. This one provides uh, direct labeling of the parts. And this one uses letters and later the legend or the key for interpretation. Whichever case you have, you can draw any of these structures and be marked correct. You are advised that in exam you are not supposed to paint them as you see here. Just draw and label the parts. Now, let us study how blood circulates through the human heart. How blood circulates through the human heart. By looking at what you call double circulation of blood, as you can see here. Double circulation of blood. Now, let's begin. We have seen that before the heart, you know, 
pumps the blood, the blood must be obtained from the body or from the body cells. Now remember, blood that is coming from the cells of the body is lacking oxygen. So it is called deoxygenated blood. Deoxygenated blood, as you can see at the top here. D is not unfortunate, the pointer. Okay, let me change the pointer. Okay. So, as you can see here, deoxygenated blood from the body cells will now enter the heart through what you call the vena cava. The vena cava. Now, the one on top is called the superior vena cava usually coming from our head and then then we have the inferior vena cover coming from the abdomen and the the, the, the torso or the, the the trunk the lower part of the body the legs and the rest so this one receives blood from such places now all the blood coming from the head or the other body parts passes through either the both the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. And when they pass the, the interval, it's called the right atrium. Right atrium is the first chamber that receives the blood. Now from there, the blood moves into what you call the right ventricle. The right ventricle. Now, at this level, the heart uses what you call pressure to pump the deoxygenated blood into what you call the pulmonary artery. Pulmonary artery. Now, the pulmonary artery divides into two branches. One goes to the um, left lung and the other goes to the right lung. Now, why is the blood going to the lungs? Very good. The blood goes to the lungs so that it can get rid of the carbon dioxide in it and then receive what we call oxygen through what we call respiration. Good. When that is done, the blood returns to the heart for the second circulation. Remember what I just described is the first circulation where blood enters into the right atrium, into the right ventricle and goes out of the heart to the lungs. That's the first circulation. The second circulation, after the blood is oxygenated in the lungs, it now returns to the heart through what you call the pulmonary vein, as you can see here. And it enters into what you call the left atrium. The left atrium then moves on across the valves into what you call the left ventricle left ventricle again with pressure this blood rich in oxygen called oxygenated blood is now pumped into what we call the iota the iota now the iota now distributes the blood to all the body parts now the blood gets to the body cells it is the oxygen is used up and then returns again into what you call the vena cover as deoxygenated blood. Then the process is repeated this way as you follow the direction of the arrow, goes to the lungs, is oxygenated back to the heart through the vein into this chamber, then to this chamber is pumped through the aorta. Then that circulation continues. Now, we call this kind of circulation double circulation. This is the first circulation, and the second circulation moves this way. Good. So take your time and study the path. And this is the path of labor here. So let's look at the path as a way of revision. Deoxygenated blood enters the heart through the vena cava. Now the vena cava is the largest vein of the body. Very huge. 
Then from the vena cava, it enters what we call the right atrium, that's the first chamber. And then into the right ventricle. And then from here, it is pumped under pressure into the pulmonary artery. The word pulmonary means lung. Okay, so pulmonary artery. Then from the pulmonary artery, it goes to the lungs for oxygenation, for oxygen to be added. Now, at this level, the blood is no longer called deoxygenated. It's now called oxygenated blood. Now, the oxygenated blood enters the heart through the pulmonary vein. So, don't confuse the two. The artery sends the blood away from the heart. Away, artery, away from the heart. And then the vein brings blood towards the heart. It enters the left atrium. Then into the left ventricle with pressure it is pumped into the iota again the iota is the largest artery of the body then from there the iota transfer, uh, transports the blood to all the body cells for the cells to use the oxygen so it is self-explanatory take your time to go over it is easy to understand now the parts of the heart as you can see, we have um, the right atrium. Now, these things we see are called the tri tricuspid valves. They allow the blood to flow into the right atrium and also prevent the backflow of blood from the right atrium into the... Uh, they prevent the backflow of blood from the right ventricle into the right atrium. So then it moves through the pulmonary artery to the lungs, back into the pulmonary vein, to the heart, to the left atrium, and this is the left ventricle. The valves here are called the, the mutual valves, or what we call the bicuspid valves. Then here is what we call the the iota valves into the iota, then to the body cells. Please learn the spelling of the, the, the parts. This diagram also helps you to draw just use letters to present them and then interpret the meaning of the letters on one side. Okay, so this is it. Today we'll look at the functions of the parts of the circulatory system. Now we study the double circulation of blood through longitudinal session of the human heart. Now, draw a research into the compos composition and function of the blood. In other words, all the things found in the blood and the function of the blood. But this will be the focus of our next lesson. Now let's study the assignments. We have to state one fashion of each of the three parts of the circulatory system. And two, draw the longitudinal section of the human heart and label the part. Don't feel lazy, draw it because it's required in BC to learn how to draw the human heart. Yes, of course, in BC they might not necessarily ask you to draw the human heart. But learning how to draw it now, you can be bold enough to name the parts if it is drawn in a practical lesson or in a practical exam. All right, congratulations for patience. Stay safe. We'll meet again. Bye bye.